This episode is brought to you by Loot Crate, the box for geeks, gamers, and pop culture nerds. For less than $20 a month, you get six to eight gamer and pop culture items like vinyl figurines, comics, shirts, and more. Go to lootcrate.com slash PFT and enter code PFT to get 10% off any new subscription. May's theme is Unite. So sign up now and you'll get swag from super groups like the Avengers, Team Fortress, and more. Today's Spontane Nation is also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code PFT at checkout to get 10% off Squarespace. Build it beautiful. Ah, uh, welcome. Welcome, my friends. Weather... Ye be returning, or whether ye be here for the first time. Is there a way I could have condensed that into a word like returning? What's the opposite of returning? Arriving. No, not quite the same for my purposes. What a terrible introduction. <laughs> Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, young men, young women, children of all genders. Not pets. If you have a pet that is listening to this show right now, first of all, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the situation. Secondly, I will thank you to order your pet from the room. For you see, scripture tells us that God granted us dominion over the beasts of the field. And you're saying, Paul, my pet isn't a goddamn ox. It's a dog. You get what I mean? We're not going to get, guys, we're not going to get anywhere if you're going to take my words literally and pretend you don't understand, understand <laughs> my new words. You understand me? Listen, guys, it's not difficult. I'm sorry that we had a fight that mostly was on my side of the world. What? I don't know how to define. Here's another word we need. The, the physical relationship of me to you right now as you listen to this. So if I say my side of the, the what? The p -p pod sphere? Now, does that mean we're both in the pod sphere when you're listening to this? And I'm talking. Because guess what? While you're listening to this, I'm somewhere else doing something else. This is not live. Okay? When you, when you go to see a movie, you're not asking the people in the movie, do you want to get together later on? Oh, are you? Oh, my God. This is embarrassing. I didn't realize you were crazy. Are you as crazy as the jinx? Bob Durst? <laughs> He's on my mind a lot. We're recording this in advance, so who knows what's happening to that guy now? Probably getting away with three murders all over again. He seems, he seems to have it down. <laughs> you know what this feels like? This feels like one of his weird one-sided conversations that he has when he forgets that he's got a microphone on. <laughs> oh, no, I'm a Robert Durst. I shouldn't have taken that Facebook quiz. <laughs> I was hoping I'd get a Mandy Patinkin. That's the kind of crazy I can get behind. <laughs> Guy who's afraid medications are going to give him cancer. I don't know, guys. Look it up. <laughs> that's really, that's the story of that dude. <laughs> I know a lot of people are not, you know, making jokes about it. But uh, it is a true thing. <laughs> and... <laughs> I've checked three sources. As far as I'm concerned, that is good journalism. Folks, the show is very soon about to not be this anymore and be another thing. So can you fucking hang on for two seconds? <sighs> I, I was sighing because I'm so happy. <laughs> that, was, that was a sigh of deep contentment. I think that was obvious. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Spontanea Nation. I am Paul F. Tompkins. I am your host. That is Evan Schletter playing the piano. Uh, and what we're going to do is be in the moment with some people and have some fun. I have a very special guest on this episode, an old friend of mine. It is always a treat, a thrill, a delight, a pleasure, and a privilege to share a room with her. Yeah, not just a planet. As, mo- as most people say, it was a pleasure sharing the planet with you. <laughs> Goodbye. A lot of people's last words. <laughs> you, you will know my guest from her role as Sweet D on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Please say hello to Caitlin Olson. Caitlin, hello. Hi, Paul. How are you? Do you, you? think they said Hello. I a lot of times I will give the audience instructions to uh-huh. say things out loud. Yeah, and then every once in a while on Twitter, somebody will say, "I did it. I actually said the thing out loud that you asked me to I say out did. loud." I to hope that, they did. To that one, lo- that one guy. Mm-hmm. Hi. Why don't we give the listener a chance to say hello now? Okay. Okay, guys, say hello to Caitlin Olson. They didn't do it. They didn't. They I did. bet some I people did. I don't think they did it. If you did it, let us know at Spontanea Nation. Let us know. Yeah. Don't bother Caitlin with this. Nah. She doesn't need to know. Nah. I don't care. <laughs> but you can say hello to her. Hi, guys. <laughs> Either way. Caitlin, I have a question for you submitted by our previous guest. Okay. What's your favorite invention? Whoa. Yeah. There's so many. There's so many. Of all times? Let me ask you. You think about that. Okay. But let me ask you a sub-question. Yeah. How many inventions do you think there are? <laughs> <laughs> Since the dawn of time? If you like. Oh, man. I mean... You know, don't the don't the monkeys use a stick to eat the ants? Are we counting monkey inventions? I don't know. You ask your previous guest. <laughs> she is not here anymore. This is a real this is a real tough one. It is a real tough one. It's a real brain teaser. <sighs> I might Is this this is something I answer now? Yes, sure. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> maybe guys. This might sound boring to you, but the electric toothbrush that is very exciting for me. Can I tell you something? I have an electric toothbrush. It, yeah. I love it. Haven't had a goddamn cavity since. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Nor and, have I. Right, Come to see? think of it. Yes. They're so great. Just the same old ones that they have to keep refilling with new porcelain. <laughs> yeah, yes. Out. Yeah. <laughs> when it gets too, uh, too silver, it starts to threaten, starts <laughs> I'm, to threaten disease. I finally have gotten all the silver okay. ones out. That's good. Yeah. yeah That's yeah, good. Yeah. You're They've a grown been, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a grown man. Yeah. I'm entitled to teeth that look like teeth. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, you know what you can do with that if you're a lady? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can brush your your wedding ring with it, and you never have to get it cleaned. <laughs> it's a little trick, a little side trick. But now, do you also put It sonically that in your, cleans it. Do you put that in your mouth? You switch them up. Okay, good. You know how you have two different- Do you have yeah. a brush head that's just I, for cleaning jewelry? I do. I do have a jewelry brush head. <laughs> and so what do you, do you put something on it when you clean? No. You, just, you don't have to. Just rinse it in water. It's got all that Sonics. <laughs> that's what you put on it. You put the Sonics on it. That's all you need. Now that's also my brand. Mm-hmm. There's other brands, of course, mm-hmm. and maybe people at home, people at work, people at the gym, wherever they're listening to this. I, that's not the invention I'm talking about. You're talking specifically about the Sonic. I'm talking about the Sonic toothbrush. Sonic hair. I should have been v- much more specific. Not just electric. I want it to be Sonic. I want it to shoot its Sonic waves in there. And yeah, you heard me. Now, you know it's just vibrations, right? Yeah, but this vibrating <laughs> so hard, Paul, it cleans my, my teeth and my jewels and my kids. <laughs> Kids, have you ever tried to brush a two-year-old's teeth? They don't care for it. You got to do it fast. Yeah, and if you got a sonic one, you can just it, it, you can do it real fast. But now, how do they hold still for that? It's tickly. It takes a little practice. Do they kind of enjoy it? Yeah. Uh, n- no, no, no. But I don't care. That that goes on in my house a lot. What other? What do are you the- enjoy this? No, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> what are the major things? That little kids don't like to have done. They don't like to brush their teeth. They don't like to brush their hair. They don't like to brush their hair. Right. No. They don't like to get dressed. They hate to get dressed. Mine don't like to get out of pajamas. Right. They'll change their pajamas into new pajamas. Right. That's fine, but they don't like to put clothes on. Then what are the what are the occasions where they'll change from one set of pajamas into another set of pajamas? Every day they don't have to go to school. They don't they want to wear pajamas and I say, Well, you gotta change your pajamas. You just slept in those and they're like, Great, we'll change into new pajamas. So we do that <laughs> every day there's no school. If you see my kids at the park, they're probably going to be in pajamas. 
But to now, be clean. but <laughs> absolutely. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm not calling social services on you. Good, good, good. Uh, but pajamas now are sort of indistinguishable from uh, like your regular play clothes, right? I mean, little kids do have they do have pajama sets, right? Yeah, these Where are be like sets. a character on there, and then matching. Yeah, pants. there's like all little dinosaurs everywhere. Yeah, yes. the top and the bottom are going to look the same. That's how you know it's a it's a pajama set. But now your kids are old enough; they have graduated from the pajamas that are all one piece, or That's is right. that still okay? No, they're two pieces. Two pieces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> two pieces. No. <laughs> if I try and trick them and say, "How about we do super soft, snuggly pants and a super soft, long sleeve shirt?" Yeah. That's a no go, Paul. It's Why is pajama. that? I don't know. I don't know. It has to be pajamas. It's got to be pajamas. <laughs> that was the original ad campaign for pajamas, right? <laughs> yes. It's got to be pajamas. It's got to be pajamas. Uh, will they, if they are in their clothing, like they they come home from school, they're in their clothes. Mm. Is it then difficult to get them to change out of those clothes and into pajamas? It, they do it immediately. Oh. These kids love, they love pajamas. <laughs> they love them so much. Now, this is starting to bore even me, so I apologize. No, but, but it's, it's, it's... Yeah, that's like what we do. I but think because we, we have an idea of what it was like uh, uh, for people uh, in, in like Mad Men times, mm-hmm, right? Like mm-hmm. the 60s or whatever, where you came home from work. Yes. You would loosen your tie, I guess, or mm-hmm. put on an apron, and then you would remain in those clothes yes. until you got until into bed. Until bedtime, yes. Yeah. Or a shower. But I, I remember... It's a relatively recent uh, development in my life, and I think this is thanks to my wife, of changing into another thing just to be around the house. Yeah, I do that. Maybe he got it from me. To clarify, the little one just does everything the older one does, and Mm. it's the older one that's obsessed with pajamas. So that might be why they're both doing it, but I also change out. I'll come home and change out of jeans and put on, like— some sort of a lounge pant. Absolutely, a lounge yeah. pant. Yeah, with I want to be comfortable. Sure, of course. Yeah. What if I have to put something down, but I don't want to put it too far away from me? That's right. Yeah. I, I have a friend, my, my wife and I call refer to the, that as soft clothes. Mm-hmm. We call them snuggle pants, but I didn't want to say it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Go get your snuggle pants on. I can see that. I can see that. Uh, I have a friend who calls them uh, pre-Js. Pre-Js! Yeah. That's perfect. Because then there is another pajama that you do put on. Of course. Like you, that, that's your lounge. You have your lounge pants. Yeah. But then you have, you ult, you have your ultimate pajamas that you will get into bed. Pre Jays. I like that. Yeah. 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 Eh, I'll stick with snuggle pants, but okay. I like pre Jays. Uh, the before the the electric toothbrush before the Sonicare, uh, did you find brushing your teeth to be a chore? Did you have cavities? Uh. No, I mean, we were the family that wasn't ever allowed to have sugar. So I never had cavities until like high school. I'm, right. I've got like a hand. I, I have a few, but right. no, I didn't really have them. Did and you have those metal fillings? No. Wow. No. It must have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> to go straight to the porcelain ones that yeah. nobody can tell. Yeah. You know what wasn't nice though? When you were hungry, having to go to the garden and pick a carrot and wash it off with a hose. Oh, no. Having that be your oh, snack. God. Yeah. Oh, you're hungry? Oh, you want what the other kids have? Okay, why don't you go live with them? That was, that was the answer. You don't like it? I don't care. <laughs> That's See? Right? It see? comes back around. Yeah. Uh, you grew up in Oregon. I did. Uh, and in a particularly crunchy area of Oregon? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was pretty Or liberal. was your family d- different than other families mm, that you knew? My family was much different than mm. other families we knew. Everybody else had like white bread and bologna and mayonnaise sandwiches and I was so jealous. <laughs> it looked so good to me. This was a thing that you would perhaps sneak when you were away from home? Yeah. Well, my, I didn't have to go too far because my grandma, my dad's mom, we would spend the weekend with her and right. just go crazy. Did the parents know that this was happening? Yeah, I think that they did. I mean, yeah. Now now talking to my mom, she <laughs> she was like, I would take her aside and say, please, please don't do that. And she'd be like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is her mother-in-law, not even her mother. Wow. If my mother-in-law did that, wow. I would be so mad. But we were in heaven. Right. She was the best. Was, was it hard Was it hard then to readjust to life in uh, to the general population <laughs> of your home? No, no. We we didn't say a word. We knew what was going to happen when we oh, got home. Oh, really? Oh, but, yeah. what, but did you find it difficult? When you got back, was it difficult to go back to you know going out and uh, shagging a carrot <laughs> uh, for your snack? No, because we were all guilt- geared up for it. That was normal. You this knew. was just like once you knew a it week. Was coming. Yeah, yeah, we knew it was coming. It was like a prison furlough. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and now I do the same thing to my kids. 
Are you are you like super healthy with them? I'm he- yeah, but I don't think it's as crazy now because now there's a way to be super healthy and it tastes good. You mm-hmm. know, we didn't have Whole Foods back then. You're not talking about carob, are you? Ugh, I hate carob. <laughs> Paul, thank you for clarifying. Ah. No, no, that's gross. Was that a yes. quote unquote treat? Yes, when you were my mom up? tried to pass that off. I was like, are you are you kidding me? You taste it. Does it taste anything like chocolate? I just got mad. <laughs> I just got so mad. No, well, like, that's the difference is now if we go to a birthday party and there's cupcakes. I was my just kids eat cupcakes. You. Well, no. F- I don't deprive them. For you growing up, birthday parties, did you have a cake? Yeah, but she would make it. So it was probably, oh. yeah. Oh. No, she'd make, like, you know, carrot like, cake. I was just, yeah, oh. I know. I know. That's for people with allergies, the end. I, <laughs> there is no reason. But it was so special should, to us, oh. though. <laughs> We loved it. What What about the frosting? Because the frosting is the only good thing, to, yeah. in my to my mind, about the carrot cake. Yeah, yeah. She would she would do that. Yes. I mean, she wasn't a monster. She loved us. She just <laughs> wanted us to be healthy. But once a year, you would get that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holidays, Christmas, stuff like that. So on Halloween. Oh, oh, oh of course, Halloween. Oh, my poor mom. She's gonna be so sad. She's the sweetest, loveliest woman in the whole world, and she was just trying to do her best. But we had to go trick or treating, and then when we came back, sometimes we'd have to trick or treat for UNICEF, you know. Of, c- of and course. Like, okay. But then she would let us trick or treat for candy, and we'd have to come home. And she felt bad that she was going to take it away, so she was like, "We'll pay you a nickel for each piece of candy." So we had to give all of our candy to her, <laughs> to them, not just her. Why am I blaming it on my mom? I'm sure my dad was involved somewhere. <laughs> well, because she was probably the one she that was, was in the charge one. of these transactions. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Dad was reading his paper, smoking his pipe. No, he was like uh, <laughs> behind her going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but still. <laughs> do, but do you think it was more her idea than his idea and he I, went along with it? I think, look, now he would be totally on board, but yeah. he, yeah, I think I think it, it was led by her, but they were always a team did about they, it. Did either of them grow up that way? No. No, not at all. But wow. my mom did not like how she grew up in any way, so yeah. she just went the opposite. Wow. Parenting, eating, all that stuff. <laughs> and she was a hippie, and we had, like, a giant garden, and, you know. Part of it's kind of cool now right. looking, but, like, you know. Of course, yeah. We still, we have a, I have a big garden, and my kids, you know, help me with it, and they, if they're – they can eat out of it and I think that's cool that they like to eat like my my son's obsessed with kale and like herbs from the garden he'll just go and eat them I don't tell him if he's hungry he has to eat that but it's I think it's good to expose your kids to vegetables absolutely yes it's yes oh god Paul I hope no one's gonna try to argue that I'm just I'm just picturing my mom listening to this and I just wanted to apologize to her Um, well I tried the best I could You know, I'm sorry, Caitlin, okay? It I'm must be, sorry. It must be somewhat easier because living where you live, there's probably more people who are are uh, having their kids eat healthy. I was going to say, you know, preschool now, everyone's got a very similar lunch. Most yeah. people realize that you're not supposed to eat bologna and white bread and mayonnaise every day. Right. Any allergies? No. Uh, do, they know, do they know kids who have allergies? Do... Uh, it, do who? Does who? Your kids. Yes. Because that is that's a huge that's a thing that when I was going to school was not an issue yes. at all. Like you never you never heard about it. It's an our preschool is a no nut preschool. <laughs> <laughs> so locked down. It is so annoying. It is so annoying to me. I and I don't I really don't think anybody has a nut allergy. There's one kid that has like an egg allergy and we were all made aware that he had an egg allergy and so we're like, okay, great, I'm trying because you know, we sometimes you bake a banana bread and bring it in. And I'm sure. like, well, I can't do that. He's got an egg allergy. Just recently found out it's just a raw egg allergy. <laughs> Why do we all need to know that this kid's got a raw egg allergy? No <laughs> one's bringing shame. in raw eggs. Why do, He should have like a scarlet E that he has to wear. <laughs> yes. That, that's runny. <laughs> so we all know. <laughs> it's dripping. <laughs> to clarify. Uh, I hate carrot cake. I know. I understand. I hate it. I still like it. I don't like it. Nuts in it. I don't want walnuts in it. Nuts in uh, chocolate chip cookies? No, no, no nuts in desserts. No, right? Handful of nuts if you're hungry, yes. you know, and you need a protein snack. No nuts in any dessert. Keep separating. That's right. I, I will enjoy. I can enjoy nuts in a candy bar. 
Like an almond joy, like an almond joy, mm-hmm. like a, like a Hershey's with almonds. Yes, I can enjoy. fine, that's fine. A, a, a Snickers. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, okay. I, 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 it sounds I like we're arguing, but I think we're at my grandmother's agreeing. house. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, name brand candies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brax. Did you ever get those? The stars. No. Oh. Is that, that an East Coast thing, or does everyone have? It that? might be an East Coast thing. No. No. Yes. No. no. People are saying yes. They're and shaking no, their head. They're rolling the their eyes and shaking their head at me. <laughs> like I don't know all the candies. Brax was like a ch- B R A C H. Apostrophe S was a chocolate company, and they made these little uh, stars that were like the size of a, a nickel, uh, which, how ironic. Yeah, that, uh, could, how, could have bought a lot of those. That's right. Do you remember how much, like, what was the most amount you made from Halloween? Oh, God, I don't know. I mean, we were, you know, we were like five and six. Money meant nothing yeah. to us. You could never enjoy the fact that you were collecting. No, what are we going to do with a bunch of nickels? Buy candy? <laughs> yeah, took it over to my grandma's house and bought a shitload of candy. <laughs> no. Oh, that's what it was. It all it just came scam. back around. Yeah. <laughs> your mom would give your grandma the candy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kaylin, thank you so much oh, for being it's here. Lovely. It's always a pleasure to I see you. I love talking to you. I love talking to you too. Yes, no. We only ever do it with microphones present, yeah. but it's always nice. Yeah. Um, now this, uh, as people are hearing this, it is May 11th mm. is when this is available. Is there anything that you would like to promote? Uh, yes, I will be shooting season 11 mm-hmm. of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia then. Uh, season 11. Season 11. Is that ridiculous? That's really nuts. That's so weird. Still fun for you. So much fun. Every day. Every single you day. You love the people. I love it so much, yeah. You love doing the kooky scenes. <laughs> Mostly Goofing the kooky, around. The kooky scenes are always the favorites. <laughs> Uh, I am so happy for you. Thank you. And I wish you continued success. Thank you. You too. It is always good to see you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, And when we return, we will reveal what location you were going to give us for our improv. um, And we will also extract uh, from you a a question for our next guest. Mm -hmm. All this will be happening. When Spontaneation returns. Oh, hello to you from Savannah, Georgia. Me, I'm just a humble contraption maker, and I I have my own small business sending out contraptions, and I don't have a whole lot of time to go to the post office. Well, luckily, there's Stamps.com. Getting your mailing and shipping done can seem like a no-win situation because going to the post office takes up valuable time, time you can spend making up contraptions. You could try to lease a postage meter, but that's expensive. They want multi-year commitments. They got hidden fees. Not very honorable, if you ask me. If this was the days when men still had duels, I'd be having to cross swords with a postage meter. Stamps.com is a better way. With Stamps.com, you can buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package right from your desk using your own computer and printer. Let's say you build your own computer and printer. These count as as contraptions. If you can figure out a way to make them work, you can print up stuff from Stamps.com. You can even get special postage discounts you can't find at the post office. Plus, Stamps.com is more powerful than a postage meter. They once said that about Superman at just a fraction of the cost. You can save up to 80% compared to a postage meter, and you'll avoid those time-consuming trips to the post office. You need that time to fine-tune your contraptions. Make sure they don't achieve sentience and try to kill you. Don't just take my word for it. Here's the word of Paul F. Tompkins, host of Spontanea Nation. Hey guys, it's true. Uh, we here at EarwolfUStamps.com to send out uh, all sorts of things. Never you mind what they are. Everything's legal. Right now, you can use my promo code PFT for this special offer. You get a no-risk trial, plus a $110 bonus offer, which includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. That's a pretty good deal, you guys. Thank you, Paul. You are a true gentleman. Now, don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in PFT. That's stamps.com and to PFT. I'll see you in Savannah, Georgia. Greetings, Spontanean Nation listeners. It is I, Count Dracula. You may know me as a Transylvanian nobleman, but there is one other very interesting fact about me. I'm also a florist. I have my own flower business, Count Lilaculas, and I needed a web presence. That's why I turned to Squarespace, because it's hard to build a website. I don't know how to code things. I wear a medal, for God's sake. 
Creating something that looks good and works well is a time-consuming affair, especially if you can only sleep during the day. Squarespace is here to help. In this day and age, you need a web presence, and lucky for us, Squarespace makes it easy to build a beautiful website without breaking a sweat or dying from lack of blood consumption. Squarespace provides simple, powerful, and beautiful website templates for you to work with. Not only that, but these templates are part of Squarespace's responsive design, which means your website looks good on any device, whether it's the laptop or the phone. I love to play on the phone, but I can't take selfies. It's very sad. Every website you build also comes with a free online store if you need it, which I do to sell flowers to people for Mother's Day, dads and grads, things like that. Typical flower arrangements like for a funeral if someone has been turned into the Swapir. Just need something minimalistic but powerful? How about the cover page feature? It allows you to set up a beautiful one-page online presence in minutes. Don't just take it from me. Take it from Paul F. Tompkins. Hi there, guys. Um, you know, I had a website in the old days of websites, and what I had to do was, if I wanted to put like a live date on there, I had to call up a guy, call a call a guy on the phone, and say, "Can you put this on there?" And then the guy's like, "Nah, you don't know how to do anything." That was rude. But now I don't need that guy, and I hope he's dead and burning in hell. Thanks, Paul. What a vengeful, vindictive testimonial that was. Squarespace gives you 24-7 online support and a beautiful website for only $8 a month. I don't think they accept rubies, <laughs> but that's how I would pay. You can even get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. So what are you waiting for? Start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code PFT to get 10% off your first purchase and to show your support for Spontaneation. I suggested they use the offer code DRAC, but no one went for it. Well, they will all be there come just desserts very soon. We thank Squarespace for their support of Spontanea Nation. Squarespace, build it beautiful. <laughs> oh man, what a great ad. <laughs> I'll treasure the memory of that ad to my grave. Hmm. All right, stop thinking about that. Guys, welcome back. Are you dying to meet... Our improvisers, I know I am because they're all complete strangers to me because I underwent hypnotherapy to have my memory of them erased so I can enjoy meeting them again. Sitting to this side of me, you won't know which side. This guy, what can I say about him? He's got glasses on. <laughs> He's not wearing a hat. One of his arms ends in a wristwatch. He is one of my colleagues from the Super Ego Podcast and Performance Collective, whatever we call ourselves. That's right. Mark McConville. Hi, Paul. High five. High five. Thank you for returning to Spontaneous Nation, Mark. My pleasure. This is real fun to do. I hope I hope that is true. Yeah. I hope you're not just humoring me. I Guys, wouldn't. do I have a fatal disease? <laughs> and everybody's being nice to me? I don't think so. <laughs> How have you been since the last time I've seen you? Pretty good. Pretty good. I... I I want to talk about this a little bit. I've oh. been having this dream. Oh, okay. I know dreams are disgusting to talk about. I can I say? But shut up, Mark. I <laughs> I disagree. I think that I've heard a lot of people's dreams that are very interesting. I'm fascinated by dreams. Some people do not have a knack for knowing what is a good dream to recount and what is not. Yeah. Well, this is a recurring dream where I've gotten away with a heinous crime, <laughs> and then the they're on to me. Sure. And I wake up like, they're going to catch me, but I haven't done anything. <laughs> so, And you, I, I was so, it rocks me to my core when it happens, and I don't dream very much. So I actually looked it up, and it's a, apparently it's very common, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel very common. <laughs> like It feels awful. It is terrible, and I just had it two nights ago, and I'm still like, I didn't bury a lady in a shallow grave right. and I, write it down and then tear it <laughs> up. Write it down! Yeah, I wrote it down in the dream, and then I tore up the paper, in the and dream. a detective showed up with a taped-up piece of paper. <laughs> that is a true story. In the dream, did you write down, I buried a lady? Yeah! I, I mean, I don't know what I wrote, but it was enough that 
the police went, I think we found who murdered the lady we found oh. buried in a shallow grave. Probably this guy who said, I buried this lady. Here's, Signed. My, here's my home address. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll be home between 7 and 12. So if you have those dreams, write into the show. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah, sure. Spontaneous nation. Uh, sitting across from me, this gentleman also returning to the program. Uh, you may see him as the patriarch of the Thunderman family on the Nickelodeon series, The Thundermans. He plays one of the titular Thundermans. I am the titular Thunderman. <clears throat> I suppose so, because it's your, cause your wife took, <laughs> Mrs. Thunderman yeah. took the Thunderman name. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> when we went into hiding in suburbia. I my, didn't say your name yet. Oh, sorry. Chris Tallman. <laughs> <laughs> we, went, we went in hiding in suburbia. We decided to take my superhero name and make that our family surname. Sure. That's the level that we're working on. It's, it's a kid show, but it's a very fun show. Oh, thank you very much. But I'm just saying that's the level of my character. That's how clever. Oh, I, I see. You're yeah. saying these people are not very smart. We're not the Lex Luthers. Right. We're not the Brainiac Fives. Well, but you're good people. Who's the, who's the smartest superhero? Superman? Who's the smartest? Or Batman. Superhero? Batman's pretty the smart. The Batman, probably. But then you have somebody like Mr. Terrific who like builds all this technology and stuff like that. Uh, if he was so smart, he could have come up with a better name. <laughs> thank you, Chris Tolman. And now, <laughs> wow. wow, you fell right into my trap. Wow, yeah, I forgot you hate Mr. Terrific. That's right, <laughs> it's a classic Mr. Terrific trap. Now, we are pleased to welcome. <laughs> I just got a wave, an in studio wave. I am very pleased to welcome a newcomer to the show. Uh, we have not now, Ma madam, we have not met before. Is that correct? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't recall. But I'm going to return your watch to you, and Thank you will you so be amazed. <laughs> Please welcome uh, to the show, Jean Villapeak. Thank you. I said it correctly, right? You did. You, you I keep wanting, because I'm used to seeing it written down, I keep wanting to say Jean Villapeak. Well, it is, my first name would be a, a man's name in France. Right. And it's a French last name, but I am from New Jersey, and um, my parents were unawares of uh, that that being a man's name. So, Jean Villapique. Were they not uh, into the, the, the French? Are, are you French on both sides? Uh, just my father's side. But mm. his grandparent was uh, Grandpa Pettit, which is petite, little. but they called him Pettit. Oh, little grandpa. Yeah. Little I grandpa. love him. He lived to be 103. No way. Yeah, big ears. Do you, <laughs> do you think that was the secret? Yes. He let him grow. No shame. <laughs> he let him grow. Hey, you got to fly your fleet freak flag, waffly fly. <laughs> Keep a fowl for for two two. You understand? Uh, gee, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, I will explain to you and to the listener how this is going to go. There's going to be two hits. Us hitting you with some comedy. <laughs> you hitting the floor with laughter. Um, what's going to happen is, uh, based on anything that's been said today, my conversation with Caitlin, uh, my monologue at the top of the show, our interactions right here and right now, um, that is all fodder, uh, inspiration for a, uh, a narrative improv that we're going to do. It's going to be one story, uh, taking place over the course of the next two segments. Um, and, uh, during the improv, you will hear certain sounds. You may hear this. That is cut to, that means we're moving laterally in time. Uh, this is a flashback. We're going backwards in time. And if we want to get out of that flashback into the present day or go into the future, that is our flash forward sound. Anyone is able to press these buttons at any time. And listeners, I hope you remembered which sound is which. All right. And now we begin with our location oh. provided to us by Caitlin Olson. And that location is oh, a UFC weigh-in. A UFC weigh-in. There we have it. We take you now to a UFC weigh-in. All right, go ahead and step on the scale, please. This, this scale? Yep, step right up there, ma'am. Uh, you might want to put down that umbrella in that heavy bag. Of course. Is that um, groceries? Uh, yes, this is uh, my heavy grocery bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is really just for your body weight. And also, if it rains, though, I'll just put the umbrella down as well. Yeah, you don't, this is, you know, just, just, just your way in. They will be next to you 
We don't have uh, valets or anything. No one's going to take it away from you. It's, that's all your stuff. Just Absolutely. On the scale. I paid for it. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, okay. Wow, 135. You are fit. Thank you. I am. Um, it's been a struggle. Oh. Well, uh, okay. Well, uh, good luck on your, your fight today. Thank you. Um, I don't know how often you engage in dialogue. Never. With people. Pre- I Do not. I'm not part of my job. I didn't want to talk to my coach, but I'm just not feeling it today. I don't mm. feel the rage. and He's I... probably waiting for you. I feel happy today. I'm having a great day. Mom, 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 mom. Kevy? Mom. Hi, Kev. Can I have my car up now? Um, it's in the heavy grocery bag. Uh, can you get it for me? <gasps> Kevy, what did we talk about? Being grown up? Being grown up. Getting our own care up? Getting our own care up. Can you reach into the bag by yourself? Yes. Mommy's got a fight today, Kevy. Okay. Who are you fighting, Mommy? Monster Brad. Is that him over there? <laughs> Did someone need me? Oh, uh, your weigh-in's next, uh, Brad. I've been waiting over here in a towel. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's actually, ma'am, that's how you do it. You just come in ready to drop your towel. Where right in. We don't have to go through all this. Have a child in the room. Is that every grocery bag? That does seem like a good one, Brad. <laughs> he doesn't look like a monster. He looks like a, a big weirdo. Oh, I'm going to show your mom how much of a monster I can be. Hey. Wait now, Kevy, wait. Keep your shirt on. Uh, sir, Mr. Monster, I... <laughs> you can call me Brad. Thank you, Brad. You can call me Emily. Great. Okay. Mom, can I call you Emily? No, honey, there are rules. About family. I smell carob. Status. A lot of rules about conversation on the scale. I just want to let you know that I respect you as a human being. Mm Mm-hmm. And I don't want to hurt you. I just want to let you know I'm going to tear you up. Oh, it's okay to stick to the script. (laughs) All right, ma'am, if you could just step off the scale, collect your things. In just a moment, I will, but I want to... What do we weigh? What is our weight made of. I'm my- trying to find out. Well, you're 135 pounds of uh, soon-to-be pulverized blood and muscle. And uh, B-Rad, mm. if you want to step right up there. It's uh, 345. He's fat. Kevin. I'll show you fat. Hey! Mom, he's scaring me. Well, You know how I got this big? Working out and eating chocolate. I'm not allowed to have chocolate because Mom says that if you eat it um, too much, that you, you can be a, a bad person. There's a lot of caffeine in chocolate, sir. Mm-hmm. And don't sugar. Talk, don't talk to me before I've had my coffee. That's a fun mug that I have. You're, I drink, you drink coffee? <laughs> sometimes, when I go to my grandma's house, mm-hmm. she lets us have all the coffee and chocolate that we oh, want. For the love. Kevin, get up on the couch. Yes, Grandma. You want you want a latte, honey? Can I have a latte and then could you make it with 2% skim? I'll make you a latte with 2% skim foam and you want to pick yourself out a cigarette? Sure. You have one of those. You had a rough week. Is menthol okay? Is it? <laughs> it is the best. It's like eating a, a starlight mint and smoking a cigarette at the same time. Can I get one of those scones? You can have two of those scones. And you can do, you can eat them. You can step on them. There are scones beyond your wildest dreams. You can, can put them in the garbage. Can I have two to eat, one to step on, and three to put in the garbage? Yes, you can have six scones. Grandma, you're the best. <sighs> Just really want to get back to weighing. If we I'm going to step on you like a scone. <laughs> I just want to let you know that we are all just baked goods waiting to be eaten on this planet. I don't get it. And if you need to step on me to feel like you're a bigger pastry, then I'm I'm going to say that's okay. Uh, do you understand the concept of ultimate fighting? Um, I have a mind game. Excuse me. Out of the way. Excuse me. Oh. You pushed a kid. Scalesman Johnston. Oh, sir. Why are they still standing here on these scales? I'm sorry. I know the fighting line is out the door. These two are apparently having some sort of face-off right here on the scale. 
Really? It didn't sound like it. It sounded like just a polite conversation. Well, talk to Mary Poppins over here. Uh, Madam, what's your name? Emily. Em <laughs> Emily, you're one of our contenders? I'm your number one contender. Uh, oh, wait. Not Cincinnati? Emily. Cincinnati, Emily? That's right. <laughs> the Ohio Crusher? That's right, from the sausage capital of the United States. I haven't seen you since, what is it, 1997 in that fight that everyone swore they'd never speak of again. Oh, man, that Color Me Bad concert was crazy. Hey. I, I liked it in 1997. That's where we are. That's when we are. That's now we are. I say I agree. Hey. Go Bengals! <laughs> hey, ultimate fighting, what's that? It's a new sport where people just beat the shit out of each other. I prefer the Cincinnati Bengals football team. Well, that's on you, my friend, because okay. ultimate fighting is where it's at now. Well, you'll never see me again. Bye. <laughs> Wait a minute. That could have been a new friend. No, it was just Brad. Oh. He's too scared to even eat chocolate, much less watch ultimate fighting. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like... That's a boat in the harbor. Yep. Uh, the Cuyahoga River. Listen. Right? <laughs> I think. I want to go inside and see this fighting thing. Me too. Let's go in there and see this fighting thing. <laughs> this is the most brutal fight I've ever seen. <laughs> that lady is twisting that guy's head around. <laughs> He's crying, but she won't stop. She's turning them all into human sausage. Where, why was she allowed to bring that sausage grinder on stage? Oh, man. I just can't wait to get home to watch 21 Jump Street. Sure, me too. So you used, you used to be a scalesman till that monster Brad Emily fight? I used to be. I never should have let a 135-pound lady step into the ring with a man twice her size and then some. But that was the time at the weigh-in where just everyone talked a whole lot and there was carob chips or something. Yeah, that's right. It was like a human uh, heart attack. Like uh, Everybody was just like uh, uh, jamming up the blood works of the weigh-in. It turned into a free-for-all. Oh, let me get you another drink. You're just here in this dive bar now. Life's really taken a real dump on you. Know you know what? I know who I am and I know where I am. I don't need you to just restate it. Happy okay? 1998! Should old acquaintance be forgot? Now, Emily. Yes? I'm glad you're here. There's so a chance here at Redemption. People think of you as a monster. You converted people into sausages. I put them in their casings, like they deserved. Uh, be that as it may, whether they deserve to be turned into cased meats or not, it's frowned upon these days. UFC is a different thing. People don't think it's all about just breaking bones and kicking people in the face anymore. They think it's a real sport. Are you judging me because I'm pregnant? What? What? Did I say that? <laughs> you did say it to me. I heard it. I'm That's an unfair advantage. Oh, Monster Brad. That's two against one. <laughs> well, now, the one's just sort of a passenger. Can't really do much. No, uh, human life begins at conception. Oh, Monster Brad, we are not doing this here. <laughs> <laughs> just, Brad, thank you so much for coming on the program. We are just going to talk about your faith and your beliefs. Well, Jesus Christ, who was nailed to a cross for all of our sins. Don't need to restate it. Everybody knows who Jesus is. Okay, Don't I need just didn't maybe give a new listener. Well, we have all the listeners. We've had them, and we can, shall continue to have them all. Well, Pat. <laughs> I know my name. No need, no need to say it. Okay, what do I need to say? Why you have your faith. What I do for a living is beat people in a ring in front of other people and on television. Praise it. So what I need <laughs> is the Lord's might behind my punches, kicks, and grapples. And so it's, oh, we have a caller on the line, thanks to internet technology. Yeah. Hi, Pat. This I, is 
This is James out in Fayetteville. James, so good to hear your voice. How's the leg? Oh, it's real good. Still attached to hanging by a thread, but through through the Lord's will and grace. <laughs> Which, by the way, is a TV show I condemn, of course. Uh, <laughs> I still have a, have a leg that's kind of on there, so praise Jesus. Oh, uh, praise it, praise it, praise it. Now, what's your question, Jamie's? Oh, yeah, I had a question for Brad. Yep. How do you reconcile being a good Christian with also being a monster, which uh, Scripture tells us or alludes to, uh, being a demon postponed from the pit of hell? I'm glad you asked. I fought demon. Are you? Because that question is pretty, it's not a good question for you. Oh, James, you're a stickler. All right, I'll take my answer off the air and uh, say a prayer for my leg. Well... I'd like to have the answer on there. Uh, do we still have James? He's, he's, oh, he's gone. Well, B. Red, can you just address that just a touch? <clears throat> I already fought Demon Brad and destroyed him. I'm Monster Brad. I'm not a demon, and I defy you to find the word monster in the Bible. <laughs> hey, I was hiding on the line. Oh. Um, you're, that's semantics, Monster Brad. I think you're evil, and I hope you get your comeuppance in, uh, in a little bit of time, and I hope it happens in a weird way. Well, tomorrow night at the Humpback Casino, <laughs> you'll see how righteous I beat Emily, the lady I'm fighting. Oh, the sausage maker. Scri- That's the one. Just to uh, remind you, Scripture prescribes gambling. Okay, I'm hanging up now. <laughs> All right, look. We got to start this fight. There's a line of people out the door. They want to see if Crusher Emily... The sausage maker from the Cuyahoga will defeat monster, not demon, Brad. Yo. Now, the crowd is evenly divided between religious fanatics and some weird goth people. Yeah, I'd say some, a lot of hippies out there, yeah. people who clearly are wearing their own hair as some yeah. kind of clothing. They're wearing their own hair as some kind of clothing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have dirty carrots out there. Ugh. You guys we got to put on a show for these folks. But it's got to be a show, a really good show, that ends in death. (laughs) Are you guys on board with that? Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm on board with the concept that we all die. We are all going to die. Uh, And while we're enjoying this life we have, look, I've gone through a personal revolution being a mother, and I brought life into this world, and... I don't want to put another man in a casing. Mom? Kevy? Kevy, what are you doing here? I thought you had a sitter. Mom, I ran away from the sitter because I wanted to see you in a fight. You never let me come to any of your bouts, and I wanted to see you put a man in a sausage casing. Well, Kevy, tonight, I hope I can make you proud. <laughs> Mommy, yeah. I'm already proud of you. <laughs> But I, I could stop being proud of you if you don't win this fight, though. That's a good point. That's a good point. This kid derails everything. Can we get to this fight or not? Have you been smoking? <laughs> Kevin? Just a pipe. Well, at least that's got class. What's that white powder on your nostril, kid? Never you mind. Hmm. I, <laughs> I had to draw a turkey for Thanksgiving, and I needed, I needed the creative stimulation. <laughs> to trace my hand. You're a horrible mother, by the way. Not for nothing. You shut up. She's the best mother in the world. Uh, Why don't you turn you into a sausage casing? I'm doing the best with the tools I was given. That's all we can all do. All right. Now that everything's seemingly settled, let's get out there and put on a fight to the death for these weird religious fanatics, hippies, and goths. Oh. There you have it. What's going to happen? (laughs) What's going to happen besides delayed sound effects? We'll find out when Spontanea Nation returns! Returns. Hey guys, it's me, Paul, as my actual self, and I would like to tell you about Trunk Club. This, I've been waiting for this one because (laughs) this hits me personally in a way that Other ads have not. People ask me all the time, all the time, about clothing. They want to know, can I wear this with that? Should I wear this? What should I do? How do I wear better clothes? How do I look nicer or whatever? And I don't like to answer those questions because everyone should have their personal style. 
And if you want to have your personal style or you feel like your personal style, either if you know what your personal style is or if you feel like I want to change my personal style and up my game a little bit, Trunk Club is perfect for you. If you know what you're doing, you already know the stuff you like, you can go to Trunk Club, pick stuff out with the help of the personal stylist. They send it to you. Uh, you can try stuff on. And uh, if you like it, you keep it. If you don't like it, you send it back. If you are thinking, hey, I just wear T-shirts all the time uh, that have Star Wars characters on them. I want to do something different. Um, or, hey, I just got a girlfriend. She's not happy with me wearing my Star Wars T-shirts constantly. Uh, Trunk Club is great for you, too. Um, they will help you. The stylists there help you pick stuff out uh, based on the things that you like. You look around. You see the stuff you like. You pick those things. The stylists are there to answer questions. They are not there like in a in a store that you walk into to pressure you into buying certain things. Um, they do it uh, in such a wonderful way. Anyone can do it. And it's great. At trunkclub.com, uh, you answer a few simple questions about your look, your style, your size. You get an expert who will handpick clothes that are right for you based on the preferences that you have. After they get to know you and your preferences, your stylist emails you recommendations, and they are curated from the best premium brands. You approve what you like, and then you get a trunk of clothes picked for you at your door. Paul, is it a steamer trunk like you see in old movies when people are going on an ocean voyage? No, it's a it's a nice big box. Don't worry about – don't get hung up on the word trunk. It's a fun word. You try the stuff on. You keep what you want. Send back what you don't in the prepaid trunk. That is it. Your stylist, the shopping, the trunk, shipping, everything is free when you go to trunkclub.com slash PFT. That's right. I'm involved now. Only pay for the clothes you keep. There's no ongoing subscription. There's no hidden charges. I used it. Uh, my my stylist's name is Barb. She was very helpful. Um, she got that I was a guy who knew what I liked, and she you know asked me a few questions. She picked some stuff out. Um, it all works out great. Right now, it is completely free. Go get started at trunkclub.com slash PFT. That is trunkclub.com slash PFT. You can have your look the way you want to have it. Welcome, everyone, to the fight of the decade, if not the century, not the millennium, but let's say of, uh, I'd probably give it, if it turns out pretty good, a uh, couple hundred years at least. Hallelujah! <laughs> There's a huge crowd here at the Humpback Arena to see this amazing bout between Crusher Emily the sausage-making mom of the Cuyahoga River versus Monster Brad, the most religious UFC fighter to date. I love carrots! <laughs> Hippies are making themselves known as our born-again Christians. That's right. Trevor, it's never been a more exciting time in personal wrestling history. Krang, who do you think's gonna win this bout? I've only been on your planet for a short time, <laughs> so I can only assume it is the larger of your species. However, it is well known that the female has another inside. Shall it emerge for a last minute reprieve? Now, you also have a plan with your species to uh, dominate the planet Earth, is that correct? Well, as we have traveled here looking for sustenance, which you simply refer to as kale and other greeneries, we need to take these for our own. So all we'll be left with, really, is a bunch of Snickers bars and cigarettes. Uh, feces? Feces! Uh, we will also be left with feces, of course. That is our feces. Well, Krang, they're about ready to start, so let's go down to the action on the floor of the Humpback Arena. Might I drink a bit of your brain, Wayne? I'd rather you didn't, but I probably can't stop you. Well, it is sound. <laughs> <laughs> and out comes the referee to explain the rules of ultimate fighting to the contestants. All right. I'd like to not have a repeat of the weigh-in situation, if we could just really get through this as quickly as possible. My bad, my bad. Yeah, well, okay. So I want a clean fight. Uh, of course, anything is allowed. This is ultimate fighting. Uh, when the opponent is down, you will have uh, 10 seconds to uh, maul or molest them, as you will, before I will step in. Uh, any questions, Emily? I just wanted to say, uh, hello, Kevy. I love my son, and I'm oh, proud Jesus. to be a mom. And to all the moms out there, you know what your fight is. And you're already winning it. 
Where did you get a dry erase board from? <clears throat> well, I got it at the container store, which I just get in there and I get lost. Can I help you, ma'am? Do you have the hangers that have the uh, flocking on them? There's just a very narrow hanger. Oh, the super breakable ones? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh, they absolutely. Snap, but they, they, a blast yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you. if you try to pull something off of them, they snap in half. Yeah, so you yeah. don't want to put a parka on it. No, 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 no. You might, like the kind you think you, if you double it up, you could probably put a park on there, but then right. you're just breaking two hangers. Yeah. Yeah, we got tons of those. What? Oh, I see you have just a kind of list on that. It's not a chalkboard. N- no, no. It's like a chalkboard, but it's made of different material, and you don't use chalk on it. So bright, it's glistening. Yeah, it's shiny. And then here's what's amazing, though. Like a chalkboard, yeah. you can write on it, and then you can erase it like this, see? Because everybody makes mistakes? Uh, no, I think it's just because you reuse it. I mean, some people make mistakes. Some people don't. Dick, uh, can you come in here off the floor for a second? I'd like to just talk to you for a second. Yeah, what's up? A uh, lot of complaints, Dick. Can what? I say a lot of complaints. What about? This is the Those con- hangers? I know, they're the worst. No, Dick, this is the container store. This is all about, you know, micro uh, figuring Scott things Dick. out. No, no, not diseases. We're not getting into that. This is about people. It, it, but okay, can I just say, oh, I, I don't want to get into it again, but my, microscopic diseases are On part every, of everything. Yes. Part of, yes, yeah. part of life. Yes. And so when we then macro it up to the breakability of our products, it kind of takes away from the sales, doesn't it, Dick? Oh, I was just trying to identify for the for the customer, mm-hmm. uh, these are the hangers you mean, right? It's a little shorthand, the, mm-hmm. the super breakable hangers. Right. Well, when you, we talk about the plastic containers, you can say, oh, the one that blood soaks into real good, not a great sales technique. Well, actually, that could be, right? If someone needs it for that purpose. We don't need to test that. We don't need to test that. We don't have to test it, but, I mean, we could use blood-like substance to see. So, Dick, what you're telling me is you just were so concerned with microbiotic diseases that you lost your job and you ended up here in this dive bar? Yeah, yeah. Heck, I better get you another drink, sweetheart. You look down in the dumps. (sighs) What a way to ring in 1999. Yeah, well, could be worse. You could be me. I live in this dive bar. (laughs) You live here? I haven't had a home in some time. Well, where do you sleep? Just over there in that booth. <laughs> well, there's people in there now. I mean, what do there you... There won't be at 2.15. <laughs> you know what? You're probably my only friend. You can stay here tonight, but you got to find your own place tomorrow. Thanks, man. Listen, guys, I know it's late, but why don't we just hang out for one more? Oh, I am pretty hammered. You know, look, the clock says, what, almost almost uh, quarter past two. Let's just stick around for one more. Come on. You don't, you don't think you guys should maybe, uh, you know, uh, go back to your homes or whatever? Hey, man, we're cops. We can do whatever we want. <sighs> That's right. Cincinnati PD. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want us to take you in <laughs> to the jail now, do you? No, I guess not. Oh, officers, I didn't notice you in here. Oh, yeah, I got arrested. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> oh, shoot. That is such bad news. I was trying to soak human blood into a plastic container. And they thought I, I was a murderer. I shouldn't have written down, I'm soaking blood into a container. Well, there are no known blood-like substances. I mean, if you could... Well, that's why I had to use blood. Well, We've been over this. If you could come up with two or three, I would probably let you go. Two or three blood-like substances? If you could name them. I'd All go right. with two. I'd go with two. All right, I'll do it. Uh, um, uh, uh-huh. uh, uh, Hershey syrup? Um, uh, like, would I you w- cut it with something? Could you cut it with something? Like, if I cut a bottle of Hershey syrup. Ring, ring, are you still open? Uh, technically, we are open now. It's 6 a.m. Oh, cool. Can I get a picture in that photo booth? Yeah, come on in, girl. Awesome, it's my birthday. <laughs> what a strange speech impediment she has. Where she, what, she, it's only she said, ring, ring. Do you have change for this machine? Let me get that for you out of this tip jar. We're one of the only bars with a tip jar. I looked at it. I was like, what is it? And then you said it. And I'm like, yep. Yeah, so just hand me a dollar, girl, and then I'll get you quarters. Okay. Oh, this is a cheap photo booth. The Hubbins. Hey, listen, miss, before you go in the photo booth, oh, yeah? uh, can you think of like a substance that's like blood but isn't blood? It's, it's kind of an important. Does plasma one. count? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Plasma. 
Ah, uh, okay, fine. Okay, so I'm free to go? Technic, yeah, all right. All right, all right. great, all right. thanks a lot. Listen, I won't be needing to sleep here after all. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm going to go out, strike out on my own, make my way out of Ohio, <laughs> some other part of the country. Just well, see what life has to offer. I'm really going to miss you. I'm going to miss you too. The whole bar is going to miss you. Danny, Pete, TJ, Fudge Man, we're all going to miss you. <laughs> Fudge Man. We had such a such a contentious relationship, but in the end, I think we have mutual respect. Go fuck yourself. Fudge Man? Sorry. Yeah, he that is a bit just of a over handful. There. Yeah, he's a handful. Around the corner. <laughs> Go <laughs> fuck yourself. Fudge Man! Sorry. I'm gonna miss you. Miss you most of all, Scarecrow. <laughs> There's gotta be a job for a Next container store employee as a scarecrow out west. That's where I'm gonna go to the Pacific Northwest. Fudge man, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I wanted to talk. I'm sure you've talked a lot about this, but that's your, why I'm here. <laughs> just doing publicity. Um, your famous, famous <laughs> grappling fight with Carob Man. Thank you. Um, what a tough time that seemed like for you, and you retired just after. Yeah, well, you know, but it was, it was physically challenging, but more so emotionally. Oh, you mean your fan base dropping away? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess everybody's self-conscious these days. <laughs> That's a great point. Everyone is self-conscious, but I mean, people hated you. Yeah. People were disappointed in you. Oh, hold on, Fudge Man. Due to our modern technology of the Internet, we have a telephone caller calling in. Caller, Hello. Yeah, hi, this is James of Fayetteville. I got a question for Fudge Man. Oh, how's your leg? Oh, you know what? It's still here, but it's not attached to me no more. Oh, well, keep it close and give it a nice hug. I keep it close. I give it a little snuggle every night. I get, I put it in a special snuggle, <laughs> snuggle trouser leg you when gotta, I get home from work. As soon as you get home, you got to put right in there. Yeah, I change it. I put it in jeans when I leave for work. I get home, put it in some soft pajamas. I bet you got a lot of solo pant legs. I do, I do. And if anyone needs any. <laughs> well, you just like you cut one off and sew it up for the stub? <laughs> That's correct. Here, well, here's what I do. Uh, Fudge Man, thanks for asking. First time, long time. <laughs> Thank you, Fudge Man. <laughs> I cut off I cut off the one leg, mm -hmm. and then I, I, I put it on the disembodied leg, right? And then um, and then I started doing it where uh, I was getting I, I thought I'd get ahead of the game, and uh, I get a wooden leg, and then I, I just felt weird about that. I felt like I was cheating on my my natural leg that was still in the house. Oh dear. Have so you ever considered children's theater, specifically Treasure Island, the role of um, what's his name? Uh, that, that. Huckleberry Finn? Yep, that's the one. I ain't read a book much um, since high school. Um, Did something happen? Yeah, I got bored. <laughs> and today, everyone will just be reading for the next 20 minutes <laughs> while oh, I grade papers. Do we have to? Uh, woof, 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 woof. Tear, tear, grind, arr, 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 leg, arr, arr, woof, 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 woof. Hey, teacher. Yeah, a weird man came in. He saw my leg off with a bow saw, oh. and uh, he was like narrating his actions as he did it, like he was a dog who anthropomorphized himself. You think you live in a small town? You got some sort of safety. What's your goddamn question? Oh, um, do you think that Jews will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven without uh, having accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts? Well, originally, the Jews were all part of the same kingdom, weren't they, according to Old Testament? Oh, you're one of those. Okay, well, thanks for letting me call in. All right, snuggle up with your thigh and calf. I will. Okay. <laughs> Keep on listening. Thanks, Fudge Man. Is that it? I'm going to wear you like a tube top. Whatever you need to do to feel successful as a human being, I'm going to hug you until you feel love. Oh, it's on. This bout has been so brutal, and it's apparently taking place in the past. Krang, 
They're really going at it. Why don't you describe the color commentary style? What's happening for our listeners? Well, they are clearly not using the Queen's rules thus far. Uh, yes, the Queen's ultimate fighting rules. That's right. Uh, Emily so far has taken uh, Monster Brad down to, I would say, a Kobold Brad or some sort of like lesser, like a first level orc fighter Brad. Not very good at all. Krang, is this Dungeons and Dragons shit that you're saying? Well, it's not shit. It's uh, the way of it's the universal. It's how we found your planet in the first place. The universal communication of uh, role playing and LARPing through the monster manual written by E. Gary Gygax. All hail the guy! <laughs> You're stronger than I thought. Love is the source of all strength. Get him, mommy! I know you can do it. What? Do you want this sponge soaked in water or whatever? Yes, Kevin. Throw it to me. Mommy? Yes, ca Kevin. Catch! I... Oh, my eye! I'm sorry. I can't see. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Yeesh. Oh, that was brutal. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before, and, and I've existed for all time and space. In all my years of watching Ultimate Fighting, that is the most hideous thing that I've ever seen here in the Humpback Arena. And this place was named after Quasimoto, after all. That's correct. Yes. I kind of considered a rude and sensitive name now. Well, you'll see. Kevin, you're gonna live with me now, baby. Well, okay, Grandma. What, what, what happens to Mommy now? Slowly, her body is going to decay, but we put a lot of formaldehyde in there. So it's going to take a long time. She's going to be in a box, under the ground, slowly, slowly, slowly decaying until it looks like a very bad nightmare. Like two weeks? Well, probably the time when you can drive a car, she's still going to have what resembles a face. And her hairstyle... Oh. Oh, we we get the door, door, baby. Sure. I don't feel like standing. Okay, Grandma. <laughs> Hello? Hi, who are you? Oh, hey, Kevy. I'm the guy I, I waited in your mom for that fight. Scalesman Johnston. That's me. What are you doing here? Um, Is your grandmother home? Yeah, but she's not standing right now. Well, could I, I just wanted to say something to the both of you, if that's possible. Sure. Grandma, it's Scalesman Johnston from the Humpback Arena. I'm really not allowed to what enter unless say? invited. <sighs> oh, that's, are we okay to invite him in? Well, I guess so. I can't see him. You could either come to the door. Oh, please come in. I'm not going to stand. I have an ankle. There, you've been invited. <laughs> Problem. <laughs> One of my uh, shorter pantyhose, the knee length is, it doesn't matter. It's a water retention. Well, welcome into our home. I just, thank you. Um, I wanted to say I am sorry because I feel like I let your daughter, your mom, in, into the ring with a man who was twice her size and a known murderer. Yeah, his name is Monster, too. Yeah, so I feel like I can't say this on behalf of the UFC, but I'm going to just take that step. I'm sorry for taking away your daughter and your mom. Well, I think that's a nice sentiment, but Kevy's growing up and he's got to learn that we make choices and there are consequences and Emily was a dumb girl and she stepped into that ring with her own feet. Yeah, she believed that granola was going to save her. Well, that's not something she learned in this house as you can see, all the cereals in boxes. That's true. There are, I would say all the cereals are in this house. I've never seen Mr. T cereal in person. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm allowed to have as many sugar cereals as I like. Now you are swollen like a tick, Kevy. Yeah, I'm pretty big now. Mm hmm Is there such a thing as, like, kid diabetes, kid beaties? Boy, if there is, I got it. Mm -hmm. You got the baby beaties? Baby, I got baby beaties. Yeah. Should we all have a drink? It's a hard day. Will you, Kevy, will you get me that bottle of Crown Royal? Yeah. Hey, anybody up for a Boulevardier? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, can, what is what is a Boulevardier? It's, it's French. Of, yeah, it's sort of like an old fashioned, but um, mm -hmm. you know, it's made a little bit differently. You know, the more time I spend with you, the more you're like that little boy Dill from uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah, like I get that the a lot. child version of Truman Capote. That's sort yeah. of like yeah, yeah. You're like you have like really like gossamer like skin, yeah. but your lips are purple. 
real well because I drink a lot of grape juice and mm. wine. <laughs> I guess I could have one Boulevardier. Oh, just one. That's what we all say at the beginning. Why don't you sit yourself down here on this couch? The cushions are very pleasing. Oh, my. This is nice. Will you hold this leg? It was my mom's. Oh. Who's this at the door? I'll get it. What? You? Oh. Hello. Hello? I just stepped out from my dive bar to just come say hello to my new neighbors. I seen a little fat kid running around out here. That was me. He was running? Thanks for calling it running. I was trying my hardest. I, I call it more like uh, like a like an eight ball that has little pegs on it. So it's mainly rolling, and then every once in a while, like a foot might catch the ground. I call it power waddling. Well, my name's Starla. I just have a, I got a dive You're bar. A woman. D- have been the whole time. <laughs> I got a dive bar down the street. If y'all ever fall on some hard times, you want to come talk to somebody, that's going to be me. Okay? Starla? You- yes. So yes. You- Scalesman Johnson has a question for you. I just want to be clear. You saw a child running around in this house and said, I better invite them to my bar. Hey, we all we all experience hard times, don't we? And that's why I live in a small town. You live in a small town, you people are looking out for your people. Small town, small problems. That's what we always say down at my dive bar. Darla? Yes, little chubby boy? Do you know how to make drinks? I know how to make a boulevardier. If it's okay with my grandma... Would you be my new mom? I bet you we don't even have to ask. (laughs) And they didn't have to ask. And that's the story of those weird people. In a town I like to call Spontanea Nation. (laughs) That's our show, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, before we go, Mark McConville, is there anything that you would like to promote here on this day of our Lord, May sure. 11th? Go to sleep tonight and try to have an intense murder <laughs> dream. <laughs> Just really concentrate on having one. See if see if you feel like I felt two mornings ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, also listen to the Super Ego <laughs> podcast. So for in order, yeah. first, try to have a murder dream mm-hmm. where you're the murderer. Second, and you're about to get caught. And you're about to get caught. Yeah. Second, the Super Ego Podcast. Yes. And you also do a show in town in Los That's Angeles. Right. It's called Opening Night, the improvised musical. Friday nights at 9 p.m. at I.O. West, 6366 Hollywood Boulevard. Ooh, addresses. There, I've had to write it so many times. People hardly ever give out addresses yeah. in their promotions. What's the zip on that one? Oh, it's a 90028. Oh, it might be three. Ooh, uh, six? Three, six? I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, one. Put it in your goddamn phone. There you go. Gene, you get that cough out. You can cough. I'm sorry. I wish it was, <laughs> it was a cough. The worst Did you see time. the jinx? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a crazy, a crazy parade of things that that guy had going on. Totally. I had it spoiled. I I couldn't watch it last night, and then I watched the Today Show. Is it spoiled yeah, by the Today Show? I think Today a lot show. of people had it. Spoiled. The world had it spoiled. The world had it spoiled. Mm. Uh, Nobody more than Bob. But uh, it, it did prompt uh, past Spontane- Spontanean Nation guest Mark Evan Jackson to coin the phrase, hick you burp. Ooh, that's a good one. We <laughs> have a hick burp in my family, but a hick you burp I like better. <laughs> Do you, Gene, what would you like to tell the people about you? Are you on the social networking platform, Twitter? Yes, just what my a, last name, Villapeak. Villapeak. Uh, uh, what, uh, what does it mean, Villapeak? Well, it means like a turkey, like a French turkey, like the t- the town turkey. I would love it if it was like a ballet. The town turkey. Yeah, let's let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Like a turkey that the whole town shares. I wish that maybe yes that they share in a lovely feast or that they mock the town. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Vinny Peak on Twitter. Yes. Uh, and any shows or anything you would uh, like? To- I do a show Friday nights at nine thirty at uh, UCB. Franklin called mm. the soundtrack where we uh, take music and we improvise. Yes, 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 yes. Which is a wonderful show. Very good time. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Chris Tallman. Mr. Chris Tallman on Hi. Twitter. Hello. Uh, yep. What would you like to say to the people Just about you? Remind everybody Avengers has been out for a couple weeks now. If you haven't seen it a second time, right. maybe now's a good time to go see it. Sure. Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, yes. Vision, mm-hmm. Ultron. Mm-hmm. I mean, the rise and fall of Dr. Hank Pym, although it sounds like they changed that. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a, uh, Thunderman's is on. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. The, the Nickelodeon channel, constantly changing times and schedules. Uh, you, right. Monday through Thursdays, it's 7 p.m. Uh, sounds good to me. Uh, and uh, just, hey, man, more of those Dead Authors podcasts. <laughs> 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 there, the Dead Authors Podcast, almost done. We have just a few more shows to record at UCB Franklin. Uh, but you can find out about those shows by uh, going to uh, the Dead Authors Podcast page on Facebook or at Dead Author Pod on, uh, on Twitter. Um, I am at P.F. Tompkins on Twitter. And, of course, um, Eben Schletter is at Eben Schletter. Uh, and Eben Schletter has several albums that you can acquire for your own self. You can find out where to buy them at EbenSchletter.com, the usual places, iTunes, and so on and so forth. And you should buy those albums because Eben Schletter is only the best. <laughs> Thank you, Engineer Cody, for engineering us to the end of this program. Thank you, Earwolf, for having us. Thank you all for listening. Please do rate us on iTunes. Give us a good, a good, solid five-star rating. I'll even accept a four. Do not go below four. I mean, you're free to do what you want, but if you go below four, also go fuck yourself. Wow. Yeah. What am I supposed to say? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad you don't like the show. That's weird, right? Yeah. That I'm a doormat. People are walking all over me. I can't have that. <laughs> I no can't good. have it's that. no good. I'm going up to the biggest guy in the yard, and I'm knocking him down. <laughs> Monster Brad. <laughs> Monster Brad. Guys, thank you so much for listening. We do hope you will join us again. Uh, oh, I, live show June 6th, Spontaneous Nation Live at Largo at the Coronet. Tickets are on sale now, uh, June 6th. We have the first Saturday of every month at Largo. Please do come see us do this in person. It is a lot of fun. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Semper in presenti. This has been an Earwolf Media Production. Executive Producers Jeff Ulrich, Scott Ackerman, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. EarwolfRadio.com The Wolf Dead.